Good morning, Greystone. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Why don't you guys go ahead and stand to your feet? We have an awesome morning this morning where we get to sing and praise the name of Jesus. So let's sing this together. Come on. Good morning, Grayson. How are we doing this morning? Awesome. We praise you. What a great song to start our morning with. Welcome to Greystone Church. Welcome back our members, our regular attendees, our first-time guests. 
So awesome that you guys are in the building today. Man, it's great to see the house packed. Awesome. Hey, listen, first time guests, we want you guys to know that, hey, we're not perfect and we don't expect you guys to be. Here at Greystone, we strive to know God and make God known in our community, our jobs, our workplace, our schools, wherever you go. So listen, when uh, you walked in, you probably should have received one of these talk notes. At the bottom of the talk notes, there's a communication card. If you complete that and drop it in the offering bucket at the end of the service, we will donate $5 in your honor to our Southeast Goet, Gwinnett Co-op Food Ministry. So you get to do something fabulously amazing on your first time here at Greystone. So listen, you guys could have visited any of the good churches in our community this morning, but you picked a great one. So let's continue worshiping with our awesome band. Let's go.
thank you for worshiping with us. Grace Stone, you can go ahead and have a seat. Every day and in every situation, we all experience the power of relationships. From business partnerships to lifelong friendships, from casual acquaintances to committed marriages, relationships are a substantial and significant aspect of life, and they should be. God created us to live in community with one another. Relationships can bring us great joy as well as painful sorrow. And how we manage the good and the bad relationships in our lives will ultimately determine our well-being and happiness. Jennifer shared with us last week that a, that a newborn baby enters the world looking for someone who is looking for them. God has given us this innate desire to connect with people. God created us for relationships. God created us to live in community. Amen. The creator of the universe said in Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, it is not good for man to be alone. Like life is all about relationships. First and foremost, it's our, our relationship with Jesus. God created us to know him, to have a relationship with him, to have this intimate, personal relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And he created us to have a relationship horizontally with others. We first have to get our vertical relationship right, and then we can get our horizontal relationships right. And at the end of the day, the most important relationships, at the end of our lives, the most important relationships are the relationships with our family, our spouse, our son or daughter, our brothers, sisters, our mom, our dad. Have you ever thought about this, that you didn't get to choose your family? You had no choice in the matter whatsoever. It says in Acts chapter 17 that God determines the times that we should live in the exact places that we should live. We didn't get to choose our family. We didn't get to choose our mom or dad. We didn't get to choose our brother or sister. We didn't get to choose our crazy aunts and uncles. But we get to choose our friends. We get to choose our people. The people that we do life with. Now, on the Family Goals podcast, we talk a lot about surrounding ourselves with the right group of people, surrounding our families with the right families, like-minded families. We talk a lot about surrounding our kids with the right group of kids. You know, you can choose your kids' friends. We're going to talk a little bit more about that, but you've all heard the cliche, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. You become like the people you spend time with. You are the sum total of the five people that you spend the most time with. And I wanna encourage you today to find your friends. Don't let your friends find you. Don't choose your friends by default. Don't just let it happen but you choose your friends. You choose the people that you're going to do life with. We're all searching for a place to belong. I, I like this quote, I've been reading this book, The Search to Belong by Joseph R. Myers, and it says your true belongings are not your possessions, but your relationships. Your true belongings are not your possessions, but your relationships. Point number one is to find the right place to belong. We're gonna start broad and we're gonna bring it down to the, to the narrow. So first is to find the right place to belong. So everybody is searching for a place to belong. Now one of the major challenges with our kids is our kids today that they want to fit in. They want to feel loved and accepted. They want to belong. Now, kids today, they're, they're confused about gender issues. They are confused about, about sexuality. And our kids today are looking for different groups of people, and they're looking to see where do they fit in? Where are they loved? Where are they accepted? Where do they belong? 
And our kids are first looking for a place to belong, and then they're trying to figure out what they believe. Now, this is the exact opposite from our generations, old, old people like me. We first determine what we believe, and then based upon our beliefs, that's where we belonged. Amen. But our kids are looking, listen, our kids are looking for where do they belong, and then based upon where they belong, that's how they determine their beliefs. And so their beliefs are not based upon truth, their beliefs are based upon belonging. Their beliefs are not based upon facts, their, their beliefs are based upon feelings. How does this make me feel? And if it feels good, well then, then it must be right. And what the world says and what the world teaches is to go with your heart. What, what is your heart telling you to do? Go with your heart. But as followers of Jesus Christ, as Christians, we know what the Bible says about the heart, don't we? Let me, let me share with you a few verses about what the Bible says about the heart. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Proverbs 28, 26 says, one who trusts in his own heart is a fool, but, but the one who walks wisely will flee to safety. Mark 7, 21 through 23 says, for it is from within, out of a person's heart, that evil thoughts come, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from within and defile a person. Ecclesiastes 9.3 says, this is the evil in everything that happens under the sun. The same destiny overtakes us all. The hearts of people, moreover, are full of evil, and there is madness in their hearts while they live, and afterwards they join the dead. So, as Christians, as, as followers of Jesus Christ, we don't make decisions and we don't live our lives based on what our hearts are telling us to do. We make our decisions and we live our lives based upon what God wants us to do. We don't make our decisions based upon feelings. We make our decisions based upon the truth of God's word. So as followers of Jesus Christ, we're living under the authority of God's word. We're not basing our decision on what our heart's telling us to do. We're not basing our decisions on what we want to do. We're not basing our decisions on, on what makes us feel good. We're basing our decision, we come under the authority of God's word. Amen. We're living our lives according to the truth of the scripture and trusting that God's will is best, God's plan is best, God's way is best for us. And so since people, and especially our kids, are searching for a place to, to belong, and they're basing their beliefs on where they belong, it's our job as the church to create a safe place for kids to belong, to create a safe place for people to belong, to create a place, an environment where people are loved, where people are accepted. And then when they belong, then they're gonna believe. Then we teach them the truth of God's word. We, we teach them the truth of, of how to live their lives according to how God wants them to live their lives. And so in the 1960s, a guy by the name of Edward T. Hall developed four spaces of relationships. And these spaces communicate how we belong to each other. And so we've got the four spaces here the public space is 12 plus feet. Social space is four to 12 feet. Personal space, 18 inches to four feet. And then the intimate space is zero to 18 inches. So touch to 18 inches. And everyone on the planet, and I believe there's about eight billion people on the planet, we all want to belong in all four of these spaces. 
And the number of relationships that we can have goes from larger to smaller as our spaces get closer together. Okay, are y'all picking up what I'm putting down? Are y'all with me? So, so in the public space, the 12 plus you know, feet away from each other, we can actually belong to thousands and thousands of people. And you can belong in the public space without anyone even knowing your name, right? So take, for instance, college football. We have a lot of college football fans here. Now, last year, University of Georgia won the national championship, right? Go dogs! We have a lot of, a lot of dogs fans. A lot of my friends were at the game, right? They, they were at the national championship game. I've seen the videos. And when Georgia won the national championship, people were high-fiving, people were hugging each other, people were crying. They didn't even know each other. But they belong because they all cheer for the same team. Jennifer and I went to Boone, North Carolina a couple of weeks ago to cheer on App State. Chase Price, the quarterback at App State, he grew up in the church here. I baptized Chase. So we're in the stands. We don't know anybody in the stands, but we have our App State shirt on. We have Bryce on the back with number seven. We're high-fiving people. We're celebrating with people. They don't even know who we are. We've never been to Boone in our lives, but we belonged because we were cheering for the same team. You, you can belong in a public space and no one even knows your name. And then we bring it down to the social space. This is four to 12 feet. Like This is our church, right? This is our team, this is our class, this is our fraternity, this is our sorority. We're four to 12 feet apart from each other. And then we move into that personal space, right? This is. 18 inches to four feet. This is our small group. This is our discipleship group. These are our close friends. These are the people that we do life with. And sometimes you move into that intimate space, but only for a quick amount of time, right? And we, we talk a lot about here, and I joke, joke with the guys and joke with the girls, the proper way to, to give a good church hug. Right, and so with the men, it's, it's a high five, it's a pull in, it's a one tap, and let's move away, <laughs> right? It's quick. You come into someone's intimate space for one second, and then you back away. Now, there's some men in our church who like to linger. <laughs> it's, it's uncomfortable to linger in someone's intimate space. I joke, I joke with the ladies that the church hug is the side hug, right? It's, it's, the night, it's not coming up all up in there hug. It's the, it's the side hug. And then you have this intimate space. If you're coming into my intimate space, your name better be Jennifer or Jesus, <laughs> right? You're not hanging out right in here in my intimate space. Now, when our kids are little, they come into the intimate space, right? I mean, you, you, your kids, your grandkids, you hold them when they're toddlers, when they're little. They're in your intimate space, but as they grow up, they move out of that intimate space. It would be weird for my 14-year-old daughter to be sitting in my lap, or my 23-year-old daughter, or my 25-year-old son, right? <laughs> But when they're little, they're in, the, they're in the intimate space. So we all have this desire to belong in all four of these spaces. And so we've, we've been talking a lot over the last few months about our church, reaching out to the community. We wanna be a light to the dark world. We wanna be a fisher of men church, a fisher of women church. We wanna, we wanna be a great commission church. And so we wanna invite people into our church, and we have new people here today. Like we have, we have new people every week, and they come into our public space. And so they, they wanna, the first step is, is to come into the space and just belong, just to be here. They're, they're not ready to be best friends with everybody. They just wanna be here. They're looking around and they're thinking, do I fit in here? Are these my people? Right, And we don't wanna do anything weird 
to scare them off, right? Let's just let them belong. Let them be a part of the worship, be a part of the teaching, be a part of our church. And after a while, they'll move into this social space. Like we had Greystone serves a few weeks ago, which is going out in the community and serving it. And people got to know each other who didn't know each other before because they, they entered into this social space where they did a project together and they're getting to know each other. And so as people move from the public space to the social space, maybe they join a servant team, maybe they join a small group, maybe they join a discipleship group. We, we give them room to belong as much as they want to belong. And, and my invitation is to everyone at all of our campuses, like you come and you belong, even if you don't believe yet, you come and you belong and eventually you're going to believe, eventually God's gonna draw you to himself. So I wanna encourage you to find the right place. Don't just find any place, find the right place. The second thing as we, as we get smaller in this is to find your they. To find your they. I love this description of the early church in Acts chapter two. And I want you to note how many times in this passage it says they. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. I want to encourage you to find your they, to find your church, to find your fellowship of believers, to find your group of people that you can worship together, that you can fellowship together, that you can do life together. We are better together. Find your they. Find your like-minded people where you can worship and pray and fellowship and serve God together. Find people who believe the same as you, people who hold the same values as you, people who are raising their kids the way that you are raising your kids. Find your they. One of the things that we learned during the pandemic is that church is essential. Church is essential. And there is a huge difference between watching online and gathering in the building to worship. There is a huge, huge difference. As Christians, we need to gather. We need to meet. We need to fellowship. There is power in the presence of God with the people of God. And I almost get chills saying that. I don't know if you can sense the presence of God here, but there is power in the presence of God with the people of God. Jesus says, we're two or more gather in my name, there am I within. And when we gather, Jesus is right here with us. One of my prayers every week is that when people walk through the doors of our church, they would sense and feel the presence of God. Hebrews 10, 24 and 25 says, let, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. The day. We're in the end times. I believe we are in the end times. And it's so important for us. And I'm convinced more than ever the importance of church, the importance of gathering for worship, the importance of doing life together. I have shared this with you guys. The statistics show now the average church attender only attends church 10 to 12 times a year, once a month. But Greystone Church is an average. Like we are above average. Let's not be average. Let's gather at least weekly to worship. 
Find your they. I have to say, I love our they. Jennifer and I love our they. We love our church. We love you. Every one of you. We love, we love our Monroe campus. We love our Coney campus. Denise Rabin told me she was serving coffee earlier. And you guys know, I don't know if you know, but Denise's daughter, Angel, was killed in a car wreck by a drunk driver when she was 16 years old. And Denise is a huge part of our church. Mark Canley and I went to her house that night. It happened about midnight. And I think about Denise every Sunday. And she's normally sitting second row, third row, right in here. And she told me today she was going over to the Monroe campus because her stepson, Johnny Rayburn, was getting baptized. And she says she often asks, why, why would it happen? Why would Angel lose her life? And she wanted me to know today that Johnny decided to commit his life to Jesus Christ and he's getting baptized. And her whole family comes to church now. Amen. I love our church. If we didn't love you, Jennifer and I wouldn't be here. We would be at the beach for sure. <laughs> we love our they. Find your they. Find your church. And then lastly, find your close friends. So we're going, find your place to find your they, and it's out of your they that you find your, your close friends. So if friendships were a dollar, you don't need 100 pennies. You need four quarters, right? You don't need 100 pennies. You need four quarters. So Jennifer referenced this book last week, Find Your People by Jenny Allen, Building Deep Community in a Lonely World. And she talks about we all have about 150 to 200 acquaintances. And then from those acquaintances, we have a, a village of 50 people, which I'm saying find your they. And then from that village, she says you need two to five close friends. Now, one of my favorite stories in the Bible is found in Mark chapter two. And Jesus is in Capernaum and he is at Peter's mother-in-law's house and he's preaching. And we, we've actually been there. It's in, in Capernaum, the Sea of Galilee is about 100 yards away and then, and then the Mount, uh, Mount Beatitudes where Jesus preached the Sermon on the Mount, it's not, not too far away. It's all, it's all right there together, which by the way, we're going to Israel again next year. October 2023, we've got room for 60 people. If anybody wants to go talk to the First Lady about it. It's fascinating because Jesus is in this house preaching. It's really right across the street from the synagogue. And so I'm kind of wondering if it was the synagogue empty because everybody was in, at Peter's mother-in-law's house. But there's so many people there there's not enough room for anybody else to get in the house. And the people are overflowing out of the house and into the streets. And these four friends bring their buddy who's paralyzed on a mat. And so you assume that one friend is holding the, the four corners of this mat, four best friends, carrying their buddy, bringing him to Jesus. And they can't get him through the front door because there's so many people there. And so they climb on the roof, they dig a hole in the roof, they lower their buddy down to Jesus, and Jesus says, your faith, his faith, but also his friend's faith, like they're all, their faith together. He says, your, your faith has healed you. Your sins are forgiven. Get up, take your mat, and he just walks out of there. I'm here to tell you that those are the kind of friends that you need. You need the kind of friends who are gonna carry you when you can't walk. You need the kind of friends who are gonna lift you up when you're down. You need the kind of friends who are gonna bring you to Jesus. No matter what's going on in your life, those are the kind of friends that you need. They're gonna point you to Jesus. 
And that's the kind of friend that you need to be. The kind of friend that's gonna point people to Jesus. The kind of friend that's gonna carry somebody else when they can't carry themselves. Those are the kind of friends that we're looking for. Those are the, the kind of people that we need to find. Ecclesiastes 4, 9, and 10 says, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Those are the kind of friends we need and those are the kind of friends that we need to be. That we're gonna lift others up. Because we say it all the time, we've got the sign outside, we're not perfect, we don't expect you to be. We're gonna fall, we're gonna stumble, we're, we're gonna be down. And we need, to, we need to have the kind of friends who are gonna pick us up. And we need to be that kind of friend to other people. So practically speaking today, and I wanna close with this, there are three categories of friends. There are three groups of friends. And some of you today need to get some new friends. Some of your kids need to get some new friends. And I wanna use the analogy of friendships with, with the ship or with, with a boat. Friendship, ship boat, you, get, you, you with me? So the first group of friends is a sinking ship. This is a, a sinking boat. Th these are your negative friends. These are your thumb down friends. These are the people who bring you down. These are the people that after spending time with them, you're worse off. You've seen things that you shouldn't see. You hear things that you shouldn't hear. When you're around them, you eat things that you shouldn't eat. You drink things that you shouldn't drink. You smoke things that you shouldn't smoke. And you probably shouldn't be smoking anything other than some meat, maybe some smoked meat. We were talking about dad jokes earlier. That was my dad joke. So when you're on this ship, you're not the best version of yourself because this is a sinking ship. And you don't wanna go down with this ship. You don't want your kids going down with this ship. 1 Corinthians 15, says, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. I don't care who you are. Bad company corrupts good character. The second ship is a drifting ship. And these people are not bad nor good, they're just neutral, right? It's just thumbs even. This is the boat of friends, they're floating, they're drifting. Wherever the wind blows, wherever the tide takes them. This is the group of friends, they like focus, they like direction, they could be good people. Not much drive, not much motivation, they just kinda go with the flow. They go with the crowd. Around the church crowd, they're, they're one way. In the locker room, they're another way. At the club, they're another way. It really depends on their environment. It really depends on where the culture has, has blown them. They're the drifting ship friends. James 1, 6 through 8 says, but when you ask, you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Our third group of friends, these are our battleship friends. These are our foxhole friends. Friends, these are the people that you want to have in the foxhole with you. These are the friends that have your back no matter what. These are the friends who are trying to win the war of good versus evil. And we've been talking a lot about, we're in a war, a spiritual battle. We're in a war for the souls of our children. We're in a war for the souls of our grandchildren. And the battleship friends, they're trying to win the war. They're the ones who are praying for your marriage. They're the ones who are praying for your kids. They're the ones who are discipling your kids. They're, they're serving on Wednesday nights. They're serving in the kids' area. 
These are your battleship friends. They're living on purpose. They're living on divine calling. They're, they're living with direction and, and focus and purpose and destination and goal and end game. Like, these are your thumbs up friends. These are the friends that are spurring you on to love and good deeds. These are the friends that after you spent time with them, you're closer to Jesus. You're more like Jesus and you're more motivated to live the abundant life in Christ. Like these are the kind of friends that we need. These are the kind of friends that we want our kids to have. They love God as much as you do. They're serving God with you. They're on the front lines with you. When something good happens in your life, they're celebrating with you. They're excited for you. These are the type of friends that we want. These battleship friends. These friendships are mutually beneficial. They're give and take relationships. They're not one-sided friendships, they're mutually encouraging. They're Proverbs 27, 17 friendships, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. I love what the Apostle Paul says in Romans 1, 12. He says, when we get together, I want to encourage you in your faith, but I also want to be encouraged by yours. Like, I want to encourage you in your faith, and I want your faith to encourage me in my faith. These are the battleship friends. These are the mutually beneficial friends. We're spurring one another on. We are our best when we're around these people. And so by way of application, how is God speaking to you? I shared a few weeks ago that I prayed that God would give me divine unction that that when I'm speaking, it's as if God is speaking directly to you. I had a guy in our discipleship group last week say, hey, you know that big word you used on Sunday? Uh, you were saying that um, like when you're speaking, it's as if I'm the only person in the room and like God is speaking to me. I said, divine unction? He said, yeah, yeah, that, that big word. He said, you were doing that to me. <laughs> So no, I wasn't doing that to you. That, God was doing that to you. God is the one who's speaking to you. Amen. So whatever it is that God is speaking to you, I hope and pray that you'll apply it to your life. So some of you maybe need to get some new friends. You need to get off that sinking ship. You need to get your kids off of that sinking ship. Get off that drifting ship. Maybe you need to find some battleship friends. Discipleship friends fellowship friends, friends that are gonna spur you on to love and good deeds. I wanna encourage you today to find your friends. Don't let your friends find you. You find them. Choose your friends wisely. You become like the people you spend time with. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. You are the sum total of the five people that you spend the most time with. And it all starts with Jesus. Jesus is the friend who sticks closer than a brother. You know, friendships are interesting. Over, over the last 50 years, I've had so many different friends. And I think friends are seasonal. You know, God gives us friends for a season. So I look back to my South Mississippi friends and my high school friends and my college friends and my fraternity friends and my tennis friends and we had our friends in Texas. You know, God gives us friends for different seasons. But I love that Jesus is the friend that sticks closer than a brother. He never leaves us, he never forsakes us. Jesus says, I'm with you always to the very ends of age. And if you've never put your faith in Jesus, that's where all of this starts. That's where relationships start. It starts with the relationship with Jesus. That's eternal life. Eternal life is knowing Jesus. And if you've never put your faith in Jesus, that's the place to start. So let me pray for us. God, I thank you so much that you are a relational God and you created us to know you, 
to have a relationship with you and you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to redeem us, to bring us back to you, to reconcile us, to forgive us of our sins, to give us eternal life. And I pray if there's anyone here, God, anyone at our Monroe campus, at our Oconee campus, anyone watching online who has never put his or her faith in you, I pray today would be the day of their salvation. We don't get to heaven through our good works, through being a good person. It's through what Jesus Christ has done on the cross for us. God, friends come and go, but Jesus Christ is the, is the friend who sticks closer than a brother. God, I pray for all of us that we would have those, those groups of friends to do life with, to pray together. Friends who are gonna lift us up, friends who are gonna point us to Jesus. God, I pray for each person that you would bring that group of people into our lives or, or bring us into their lives that we can spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Pray for each person here, God, that they can have foxhole friends, friends to fight the, fight the good, good battle, the good fight with, to keep the faith, friends who will finish the race with them. We pray it all in Jesus' name, amen. All right, Greystone, why don't you go ahead and stand to your feet. As usual, um, all of the stations are open if you need time with the Lord. So come on, let's sing together. Let's worship his name and think through what we were just given by Jonathan. Grave that home. 
other name but the name that is Jesus. He who was and still is and will be through it all. So come what may in the space between all the things unseen and this reckoning. Amen, Greystone. You guys can go ahead and take a seat just for a moment. We're going to continue in worship here and just uh, after we have some baptisms today. Let me kind of segue with what Pastor Jonathan shared earlier. One of the best applications you can make today is putting your faith in Christ. When we find in Scripture one of the next steps of, of, of believing in Christ and living for Him and following Him is to be baptized. And so today we have uh, Britain. This is Jonica baptizing Britain. She's a small group leader, uh, student, fellow student, Grayson student. And so I'm going to let her take it. Yeah. So like Josh said, this is Britain. And uh, I've been her small group leader since she was a freshman, almost four years now we've been together. And um, I have seen her on mountaintops and I have seen her in valleys. And <clears throat> when you're in a valley, you have two choices. You can run from God or you can run to God. And Britain has chosen God, and I'm so proud of her. And James tells us that we should find joy in all trials because through that we will get perseverance and steadfastness in our faith. And that is what Britain wants to celebrate today is her rededication and her steadfastness in her faith. So Britain, I have two questions for you. Have you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Do you commit to living the rest of your life fully for him? Yes. And I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please stand up. Let's continue in worship. Well, Greystone, we have one more song for you. And I know a lot of you know that this is Minor Rones last Sunday. So this song, I started coming in here with this song. It means the world to me. So this is our heart for you, that this church would just be blessed beyond measure. But I hope that we can sing this over our own families, our own church together as a group, just blessing over this place because God is doing something here, yeah? So let's sing this together. The Lord bless you and keep you make 
his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Come on. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. God, give us peace. Oh, the Lord bless you and keep you. His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. Oh, we sing. He is for you. 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 He is for you.
His presence go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you and within you. He is with you, He is with you in the morning, in the evening, in the coming and the going. Amen, church. So good. What a great reminder this morning that God is for us. You guys can go ahead and take a seat. I have a couple of announcements and a couple of other things that we're going to be dismissed today. Can we give it up once again for Megan and Rowan, a pastor, the service today, Lauren leading us in worship. I'm so, what an incredible day to worship. I think I would challenge you just as our pastor shared this morning, get to church Let's worship together. There's something different about it. When we meet together and we anticipate God to move, it's amazing. It's amazing. Life change happens. We saw that today. Uh, we saw Britain get ba uh, baptized today. Come on, the Hyatt family being here. It's amazing. We have baptisms across all the campuses today, and we're excited to see that. My name's Josh. I'm the Loganville campus pastor, and I'm so glad you guys are here. Like Jonathan mentioned, every week we're having first-time guests come, and so whether, wherever you heard about us, maybe Google, maybe by word of mouth. Uh, earlier this week, I heard somebody showed up because uh, of the Nextdoor app. Somebody sent a, like a comment, and like they flooded in. Gray Stone. So, uh, so anyways, I'm so glad you guys are here regardless. I want to direct your attention to a communication card. It looks something like this. It's in the bottom of your talk notes. If you would do us a favor, if you're here for the first time specifically, let us know about that. Put your information on there. And what we'll do is we'll donate $5 to a local food bank, Southeast Co-op, in your honor. So love to hear from you. Love to connect with you. Maybe for you, you need to check that box at the bottom. You've committed your life to Christ today. I don't know what it is. I don't know what that next step is for you. We have baptisms the rest of the year as well. Uh, we have one in October, one in November. I don't know what your next step is, but let us know, okay? Cool, Josh, cool. All right, here we go, let's keep moving. Uh, we're gonna move into a time of giving. I know we say this every week, but we really mean it, you know? Being able to give back to the Lord is such an incredible way. And when we give, it doesn't just impact the walls of the church. It impacts the outside of these walls. One way we wanted to highlight is, uh, is an organization called Blue Cares. And there's gonna be some pictures up on the screen. Uh, there is an opportunity for us, you, for because of your generosity, we've been able to supply the needs of many families. Uh, Officer Reed, you may have seen him uh, do some traffic, uh, trafficking out in the uh, different areas with the, with the red, what are those called? Traffic cones, what are those called? Traffic things, help me. Traffic. There you go. Uh, and so anyways, Officer Reed, he's been a great dynamic, uh, connector in the community. And so uh, you guys, because of your generous gift, we've been able to help our community in an incredible way. So thank you so much. So as we move into a time of giving, the ushers are gonna come on down. I'm gonna pray for us. Here we go. Lord, we love you. We thank you so much for how you have moved in our hearts today. You've moved in our lives, God. Help us to take these next steps closer to you. And I do pray that um, Jonathan has mentioned it many times. We, we don't just want to be a friendly church. We want to be a church that has friends. We want, us, we want our people to have friends, people that we can lock arms with. And ultimately, that can happen with you. So as we continue to worship, even as we give right now, I pray that you would use it for the advancement of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys. So as those buckets are being passed, um, I want to talk about one big thing that's happening on Thursday. All the ladies in the room should get really excited. There is a women's event, right, Jennifer? Yes, this Thursday at 6.30. Uh, the past couple, couple of Sundays, I've, I've sp spoken to the gentlemen in the room to do everything they can to get their significant other uh, there. But I'm going to talk to you ladies. Listen, it's not, it's not, it's not 
you know, you can still register. You can still show up. It's no cost. It's at 630 this Thursday. Jennifer, if you have any questions, raise your hand. Jennifer, come find her. She wants you there. Give her, give her an early Christmas present. Okay, show up. Be there for that, okay? All right, you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Take care.